Some people may forget that the lead of opposition start as way back in 1960. And the first lead of opposition was Apple Milton Obote. From Apple Milton Obote, we went to Basil Batalangaya. From Basil Batalangaya, there was uh, Alum. From Alum, there was uh, Paul Kawanga Semo Gerere. And after that, when we went into the new uh, political dispensation, when, 19, yeah, when the constitution was enacted in 1995, then we went into this new phase where we had Honorable Professor Latigo in 2006. He was the first leader of opposition in as far as the new constitution is concerned. Professor Latigo served for almost five years as a leader of opposition. Then came in uh, uh, Nandala, served for two and a half years. Then Fulogutu served for two, two years. And then we, uh, we had Honorable Winikiza. Winikiza came in, served for two years. And then we had uh, Honorable Bet Owol, served for also almost some, something like two years. And Honorable Matia, Matia Sibuga, who is mm. serving right now. When we look at the 11th parliament, mm. that is where our guest of matter is. What the public should know, that there is no any constitutional requirement that a leader of opposition serves for this term. The only element which is there in the constitution is that the leader of opposition is appointed from the leading opposition party in parliament. I don't want people to confuse standing committees. Because in the rules of procedure of parliament, standing committees are very clear that every two and a half years, leadership changes. Standing committees, unlike the session committees, where every year there is a leadership, a leadership change, mm -hmm. as and how the, the, uh, the leadership is concerned. But when it comes to standing committees for uh, uh, these standing committees, every two and a half years, they can renew your tenure and give you a second term, or they can replace you with another person. But when it comes to leader of opposition in parliament, that is internal politics, mm. in as far as the party is concerned. Because that's why we have seen that Professor Latigo served for almost five years. The entire, almost the entire parliament. When you are a leader of opposition, you have two major roles to balance. You have the royalty of your party, which appointed you in that office. At the same time, you are a leader of opposition and you are a member of the governing body of parliament, and that is the parliamentary commission, of which the speaker is the chairperson. What you must know that you are going to work with the office of the speaker in as far as business of the house is concerned. You, want, you, you, are, you, you are among those top people who are going to set the agenda for parliament. At the same time, you must listen to the headquarters of your party in as far as uh, priorities are concerned. How complicated is it to strike a delicate balance between <coughs> your party and parliament? In most cases, of course, business of parliament is generated almost 90% by government altogether. So, at times, a leader of opposition brings ideas and views from, from his political party. And there are some issues that we want as a political party to be spearheaded by the leader of opposition in parliament. And there's no way how you can present those issues without first discussing them with the speaker. As I've told you, it's not in any, uh, any we are written in our, in our constitution maybe even the rules of procedure, that a leader of opposition serves for five, for two and a half years. He can even serve for one year. 
He can even serve four years as it, it was for a Professor Latigo. So it depends on how the party assesses the performance of the person in the office. And I know that as NUP, they will sit being led by our principal to assess the performance, not only of the leader of opposition, but also the, the, the leadership in various standing committees. Does the current situation where it looks very delicate mm. to, to appoint or disappoint Mpuga, to reappoint or disappoint him, does it reveal anything about uh, where NUP stands in terms of politics, that they have not been able to nurture leaders of, of the character of Mpuga? I believe that we have tried our level best. A party which is less than four years old, to have that kind of organization, I think we must be very appreciative. And we all know that we have so many members of parliament who are below 40 years. And that is a plus to our leadership because they were given opportunity to come to parliament and represent the people. What, what's so exciting or so significant about the current conversation around the change in leadership in parliament? If I was first of all to advise Chagulani and the people in Kamonja, I would tell them you have the best already and you don't need to change that person. That would be my advice. But of course, as we've always discussed, this country is infused in the politics of, uh, of radicalism. And the constituency to which Mpuga, for example, represents is that of a radical group. They would want to see him fight in parliament. They would want to see him do things. And, and again, that has been formed because of the way the opposition has been treated that they have been put in a fighting mode and that anybody who represents them should be in that fighting mode at all times. But ask me, from a political sense point of view, you have Mpuga who has played his card right. He knew when to pull the red card. I'll give you for example. All along he has been in a friendly mode with the establishment. The speaker and the deputy speaker mm. are comrades to Mpuga, remembering the fact that these two just crossed from opposition to NRM. And he thought he would work with them in that context as comrades in a struggle who have just crossed. That's one. But two, if you want to be taken serious, you shouldn't be criticizing every aspect. Three, you should measure your strength in the house. If you have less than 30% of the parliament, you should use a strategy that allows you to make point whenever you make. And I think for now, Mpuga does that. Four, if you are looking for experienced politician, you are not looking at my friend Joel to replace a person who has just come to parliament to replace a person, a seasoned politician. I will tell you, I first learned about this, uh, uh, my brother here and, and the likes of Mavike in 1996. They were trained as politicians through the UID, UID. through the Nkoba Zambogo leadership. Now, those are people who, they have understood the dynamics of politics. Now, when I hear people say, replace uh, Buga, I ask on what ground? Many of them think that he hasn't been able to push the government too much. In fact, some think that he's compromised on how he does things. Every time you want people to listen to you, you must have influence on them. They must respect you. For now, the best card these guys have 
is that they have Boga. When he stands up in parliament, everybody wants to know what he's going to say. So who are you going to put there? The biggest mistake that has happened to opposition in the past is to keep twisting the leaders of opposition to fit their personal interest. I've seen that in FDC when they removed very serious leaders like Latigo, Kiza, replacing them with weaklings, people who cannot create influence. In parliament, yeah, but for as long as they are loyal to authority. You say loyalty is not what we want. We want hardworking people. We want people who can influence, who can create friendship from the other side, who can win. In fact, in a parliament where you are very weak, like opposition has to be, you need to win friends on the other aisle and create them on your side. Look at how Puga has played the issue of these other missing persons. All along, he was taken to be a compromise of person. And then he strikes once. The state is listening. Everybody in this country is listening. That is the leader who takes time to understand when to strike. You can't be striking every day. How much is on Bobby Wine's platter or Robert Chagulani's platter? At this point, he has a challenge. He's, in fact, <laughs> between a rock and a hard place because the constituency to which he represents is a radical uh, constituency. But he must be careful not to be misled into that thinking. If you, you look at the, the kind of people within the, the opposition, that people are thinking of replacing Puga, it will be replacing a class one teacher with a nursery teacher. Yeah, but adopting activism at the last minute is it just one of those tactics to win him over. Again, to, to endear him to the principle. Not, not necessarily. It is knowing when to strike, when it's right to strike. Poga, uh, Honorable Taewa, Honorable Anita, among, it was a group of one. They were the people who used to be in Katonga. They were the people who used to be in Najanankombe. They were friends. They have been friends. Perhaps now he feels that he has given in too much to these friends and now he wants to ask them for something and i think he will get that something a workout he did was timely it affected those who are concerned and i'm very sure they're they're scratching their head the same problem that fdc had on approach activism versus you know, Define uh, activism uh, versus negotiation. Negotiation is what the, this party is entering into. But let me tell you, you cannot be in activism mode all the time when you're a minority. You must look for a way of winning some and losing others. Repressing Honabompoga with someone who is less experienced or who is not a strategic um, leader, to me to be uh, uh, doing a, a disservice to our party. When Hone Bompuga was appointed as the leader of opposition, the process was guided by our president, Hone Robert Chagulain Setam. And there were so many people who were looking at that office. But they decided to appoint Honorable Mpuga. And I think they are the same reasons. The party will sit, assess the performance of Honorable Mpuga with the guidance of the principal. And I know that at the end of the day, Honorable Mpuga, because as I've told you, is that it's not written anywhere that a leader of opposition serves for two and a half years, apart from standing committee's leadership. For this, it is an internal arrangement where the party decides whether someone to serve for one year, two years, or five years. I don't think the politics of riot in this country still works. Mr. Seven has created a security system that does not even allow you to start it. But you can think and be strategic and win over certain things. What Mpuga, if he's re-elected, what he has to do 
most is to try to bring the opposition back into unity. I think that's lacking. I have seen the likes of Najana Nkombi not moving together. Mm. He will have to work on those. I would want to see him move the DP guys together, such that opposition means opposition. It doesn't mean national unity platform. platform. By the way, government benefits from a solidified opposition because then they can come up with certain issues that can be worked on. Have you seen Puga talk in parliament that even the ministers listen to him? That's the person you want. A person who can catch the air of the space and communicate a message. That's the person you want. You don't want a person who will stand up and before he even stands up, he's being bored. Then he will never communicate. That's one. Two, you must have a relationship with the leadership of parliament. You must have it. Otherwise, your issues will never see the other paper. Four, you must have experience of parliament. And when you look at the people that you're people are talking about, many of them are actually newcomers. Yeah, but I think these are ideal attributes in a parliament where the democracy reigns. But we are living in extremely abnormal When you go to parliament, it means you have accepted democracy because all those in the parliament are assumed to have been elected. Hmm. So whatever you play, you must prepare yourself to play a democratic dispensation in your discussion, in your presentation, and in everything that you do. Whenever there is any uh, rooming changes, not only in the opposition, but even in the NRM, people are free to discuss these changes. Mm. And I know that as a national unity platform, and our leadership of Honorable Robert Chiago and St. Amu, they will sit and decide the way forward in as far as standing committees are concerned, and even the leader of opposition. Of, of opposition. Okay. Money in the office of the leader of opposition in itself is a problem. When Nandala and Amria were elected in Ajahn and Kombi, the immediate thing they did was to remove Winnie. Mm. They accused Winnie Kiza of channeling money into the support of Montu. And I am hoping that. Uh, my honorable here and the people in Kamoncha are not focusing on money. They should focus on the caliber mm. of the person who gives them credibility. Which for many, many people, Noop has lacked. Credibility. The kind of people that represent you as an institution of, of opposition is very critical. And I think for now, <laughs> Mpuga talks in people's sense.